What's going on, Washington Commanders fans? Welcome to the JTFB channel, where I will be breaking down how Washington really needs to finish building out this roster before we start the season. Of course, you know, we had free agency where we made a lot of different moves, got some starters. It was kind of seen the, the layout, the blueprint of what this team's going to look like. But now we have the draft, where obviously we have to, to select our quarterback for next season. It's not going to be Marcus Mariota. Uh, but we also have to take a look at a couple different positions that I'm going to give my thoughts on and see really how Washington can finish building this thing out to where they can succeed in year one and not really be a part of this rebuild. So like I said, you, you've kind of seen the, the trend in free agency of signing these guys that could be starters, but then also gives you some flexibility. Like, hey, we like this guy. He's young. He's an up-and-coming guy. He's ready for some more snaps. He's ready for a bigger role, a bigger responsibility. So then you, you sign him. They also have some of these vets that kind of fill these holes in. And Adam Peters said, we're going to supplement through free agency and we're going to build through the draft. And I think they've done that so far. And I think we have a good idea of what to expect. But then also, like I said, there's a couple positions where it's flexible heading into the draft. So you don't have to draft somebody. But if there's someone there you like and you truly think he's the best player on the board and that they can make an impact year one, then you go ahead and take that guy. So let's take a look at the roster real quick. And like I said, I'm going to break down, kind of give my thoughts on these positions, um, depth chart-wise, and just how I really see things going out, but what else Washington needs to do. But as always, guys, hit that subscribe button, and then give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video, and then drop your comments below on what you think Washington needs to build for, some players that you like, whether it's you know some leftover free agents or if it's in the draft. So let's get right to it. Let me share the screen and uh, see what we got cooking up for Washington. And let's start with the offense. Because obviously uh, the offense did not look anything like we expected. There was a couple highlights throughout the season, but all in all did not meet the expectations of what we thought we were going to get last year. But let's start with Terry McLaurin. There's already some like rumors and stuff like, oh, Terry's going to the Steelers, blah, 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 blah. Terry's going nowhere. Terry is obviously going to be Terry next year. He's going to be wide receiver one. But then you go down the list, and this is where I get worried. Deami Brown, who, uh, once again, we've kind of been waiting for things to happen. Haven't really seen anything besides that Titans game where he popped off, had a great year. I mean, had a great game that year, uh, in that game. It's just like, all right, Deami Brown, where's, where's the rest of it? We thought we were going to see a lot more Deami Brown with Sam Howell, you know, having that connection from North Carolina. Nonetheless, it just came in little flashes and disappointing drops. And I just don't know what to expect out of Deami Brown. But in my opinion, he is not a wide receiver two in this league. I wouldn't even put him as a wide receiver three. Maybe not a wide receiver four. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's just a, a one-trick pony where he can give you some deep plays down the field every now and then. But outside of that, I'm not feeling too confident about Deami Brown. But I like what OurLads.com did here, putting Jahan Dotson in the slot. I think that's big. Because I think that's where he's going to be next season. And I think if you look at those three players, obviously Washington needs another weapon outside of Terry to really spread out the offense, get things going. And of course, you know, you can, you know, look at Cliff Kingsbury's offense and how much he uses four wide receiver sets, sometimes even five. A lot of offenses are doing that now. And you do not have the weapons currently to be able to do so. So you have Terry out wide on one side. You have Jahan Dotson in the slot. And then right now it's Deami Brown. Now I will say, I'm not being biased at all. I like Mitchell Tinsley a lot. I think Mitchell has some things to his game that Cliff Kingsbury is going to like a lot, whether it's his quick screens, whether it's being able to get vertical. Um, in my opinion, he has, I really like Malachi Corley. He has some Malachi Corley to him with, you know, really good contact balance. Um, you know, it was in the same offense at Western Kentucky. You see kind of the same things out of them. Um, so I like Mitch Tinsley a lot. I really hope he gets more opportunities this season coming up. And then obviously Jameson Crowder is coming back. But then you see guys like Casimir uh, Allen, Bryson Tremaine, uh, Davion Davis, Max, I mean, uh, Dax Mill. These are all guys I don't expect, you know, to do anything next season. Uh, Crowder, can, he's coming back for one more year. He might be our return guy. Like It depends what else they decide to do. A couple other drafts, you never know. But nonetheless, I, I could see Terry, Deami, Jahan, Mitchell Tinsley, Jamison Crowder being uh, five wide receivers. Maybe one of those guys doesn't make it. Maybe it's Deami, maybe it's Mitch. I don't know. Like I said, we just got Jamison Crowder signed back for one more year. Um, but outside of that, Washington really needs that wide receiver too. And they might even double dip at wide receiver 
in the draft, or I think they'll at least you know sign one after the draft, like an undrafted free agent. But this wide receiver draft class is way too good to not get a weapon for your rookie quarterback that you're going to be selecting at number two, whether it is Drake May or if it's Jaden Daniels. You can't just rely on Terry, Jahan, and then throw De'Ami Brown in the mix. So I have a list of about three or four wide receivers I really like a lot that would be great wide receiver twos on this offense. And I'm going to start getting down into position videos this week. Obviously, free agency is pretty much done. So it's time to hit this draft content hard before I head out to Detroit, Michigan for the draft. So that's why I'm starting out with this video to give you all an idea of what's missing and kind of like my thought process on how I'm going to go about these position videos. So I think Washington definitely needs a wide receiver too. I think they could even get a late round guy, maybe a, a special teams guy as well. Um, you know, like I said, maybe it's an undrafted free agent that they decide to sign, kind of like what they did with Mitch Tinsley. Nonetheless, they're probably going to add two wide receivers. Then we have the offensive line. Um, re-signing Cornelius Lucas, in my opinion, was huge. Really like uh, getting him back here, but you're still obviously missing your long-term left tackle. Um, Braden Daniels is not going to be the starting left tackle next season, and neither is Cornelius Lucas. I hate, you know, it's just the facts that that's not what Washington's going to go into next season after seeing the offensive line last year. And then once again, like I said, having a rookie quarterback, that is not ideal at all, which is why I like these other uh, signings that I'm going to talk about here. The next two uh, with Nick Allegretti, who it sounds like he's going to be left guard one. You know, it, he, he did a video in good morning football where he was talking about like, I want to go somewhere where I know I'm going to start. I want to go somewhere where like, I know I'm the guy and I can just sit, develop, and, you know, be a really good left guard. He played great for Kansas City. Um, some of y'all probably heard, you know, he got hurt in the Super Bowl, played through it, had surgery. Like, he's going to be good to go. Um, but I don't know. But, like, that's one of the positions I was talking about where it's like you don't have to draft a left guard. But if you like someone a lot there, like Cooper Beebe falls to you at a crazy spot, you're obviously going to get Cooper Beebe. He's phenomenal. Uh, in my opinion, he's probably one of the best left guards in the whole draft. But still, it's at the end of the day, if, if you decide to go another direction with certain picks, you're like, okay, Nick Allegretti is the guy starting next season. They are bringing back uh, Mason Brooks. Shout out to my guy Mason. Uh, big things planned for him as well. Um, but I, I, I like that they were able to get Nick Allegretti here. And then uh, Tyler Biotish, um is one of those up-and-coming younger guys like I was talking about, just ready for more. Um, you know, coming over from Dallas, a familiar face for Dan Quinn. Love that signing. Uh, I think he's going to be a great starting center for us. And then I like how Ricky Stromberg can kind of sit behind him. They're both younger guys. Like I said, Tyler Biotish is not even that old. Ricky Stromberg obviously was a rookie last year, but still just sit, develop, and learn more through him. And then he also has that left guard flexibility as well. And then you got Sam Cosme, who is the, the, the blue chip, the foundation of the offensive line. One of the best guards in football last year, not even just right guard, but just overall. You know, seeing him move from right tackle to right guard has been absolutely huge for Sam Cosme. I hope they leave him alone at right guard. And that's something I've been thinking about as well this week. You know, obviously, Andrew Wiley, I told y'all he wasn't going to go anywhere financially, it just didn't make sense. I don't see a way that he's a starting right tackle for the season. I don't see it. But deep down, I think worst case scenario, they would flip the two. Wiley is a better guard than he is tackle. And obviously Sam Cosme was drafted as a right tackle out of Texas in the second round when we got him. Um, he wasn't bad at right tackle. It's just he played better at right guard. But I think in a mayday, like worst case situation, you know, Dan Quinn's going to say like, hey, Cosme, go back out to right tackle. We have to move Andrew Wiley back inside. He's just too much of a liability at right tackle. Let him be the right guard. I mean, uh, yeah, let him be the right guard. And then Cosme goes to right tackle. But and I, and I don't like that. Like I said, he was a really good guard. Leave him at right guard. Let him be an all pro caliber right guard. Um, still, once again, younger guy. He's developing. He's getting there, but he's playing his best right now. I would just hate to mess that up. So left tackle, please, for the love of God, either trade up into the first or, you know, that's what I hope. And, and you know, I kind of talked about that on my mock draft. I'm going to talk more about it when I go into left tackles, talk about, you know, first round options if we trade up. 
Also options at pick 36. We've already got two top 30 visits planned that I'll talk about as well. So please, for the love of God, get a left tackle. <laughs> There's no way Braden Daniels is going to be the guy. And like I said, I don't see Cordy Lucas being the guy either. So either trade up in the first or take them, take one at pick 36, whatever. Get a guy out there at left tackle that can develop and protect the blind side of our rookie quarterback. Um, and like I said, worst case, right tackle, a uh, guy like Blake Fisher, maybe in like the third round, something like that. Someone that could be like a backup plan if they decide to go the Cosme Wiley route, whatever. Like I said, I would hate for Cosme to move. Get a right tackle while you're at it. Maybe a little two for one deal. Get a left tackle and a right tackle, call it a day um, in the second round. Like I said, I'll talk about all that moving forward positions, like different scenarios and different uh, players that I like a lot. Um, and then we'll go to tight end. Zach Ertz was a signing, um, a guy that played with Cliff Kingsbury, knows the offense. He's going to be a great safety blanket for a rookie quarterback, just helping to get used to the offense. And then other players on the team that are new to the team, but also new to the offense, saying like, hey, guys, like this is what you should do, blah, 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 like be a, a leader and a coach on the team. Am I expecting 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns out of Zach Ertz? Absolutely not. But I think he can still give you some production. I think he still has some juice to his game. Um, but outside of that, John Bates just doesn't move a needle for me. I'm really intrigued to see what Cole Turner as a receiving tight end can do in this kind of offense where Cliff is going to want to use two tight end sets, sets. Not a lot, but a good bit. Uh, but he also wants some vertical tight ends that can get down the field, create big plays, and um, score some touchdowns. And I think Cole Turner fits that. It's just John Bates, no offense, just does not move the, the needle for me. That's why I'm looking for a uh, tight end in, in the draft, you know, maybe third, fourth, fifth round, whatever, someone that can come in, you know, produce, and then maybe be tight end one next year once Zach Ertz is gone, you know, after this year coming up, I mean. Um, so getting mentored by him, developing tight ends don't really produce in their first year anyways. So I'm not expecting some guy to be a starter, but Zach Ertz is a great little bridge tight end. That's going to mentor someone. If we decide to draft him, it still gets you some production as well. And then obviously the quarterback position, not much to say here. Marcus Mariota is not going to be the starting quarterback. Uh, Jake Fromm is not going to be a starting quarterback. So don't worry guys. Uh, I am upset that Marcus Mariota took that beautiful, uh, zero number away from us. Um, in case we do, you know, get a guy like Jatavion Sanders or Ben Sennett at tight end, I think that'd have been great in zero. But nonetheless, we're taking a quarterback at two guys. Um, it, it's been coming out more and more as we get closer to the draft. Washington is taking calls for the pick at number two, obviously, but there it's just a consensus around the league that they are not prepared to move off of that pick. And I've I've been saying this. It's really hard to get the number two overall pick. It's really hard. As bad as we were last year, we were very close to not finishing with that number two pick. We could have easily been picking at six, seven, maybe even like eight if we were to win another game or two. Uh, but we were just that bad last season. Don't expect that to just you know happen again. Like I, I've seen some people like, oh, you know, before we trade Howell, just roll with him again and then take a quarterback next year. That's not how this works. So you move Sam Howell, you get some extra draft capital to make some other moves around your rookie quarterback. But it really sounds like Washington is going to sit at two and either take Drake May or Jaden Daniels. And like I said, guys, I've, I've been talking about this a lot. I love Drake May. If the draft was today, if I was in charge of the pick, I'm taking Drake May. But I still really like Jaden Daniels. I'm excited for both of those. What I'm not excited about is trading back a pick or two and then just getting the leftover. I want Adam Peters to pick his guy. I trust Adam. I trust the process. I'm going to be excited for every single player we draft. I don't care if it's a long snapper. I will be excited because I trust Adam Peters and what he's going to do, his talent evaluation. He's hit on the draft a lot. You know, when he was in charge of those later round picks, like the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round in San Francisco, he found some guys like George Kittle in the fifth, guys like Dre Greenlaw in the fifth round that turned into big-time players on the 49ers team. And I'm excited to see what he does in all seven rounds for us. And I trust whoever he picks at quarterback. So I'm not team Drake May. I'm not team Jaden Daniels. I'm team, for the love of God, take a quarterback at two. That's me. 
I don't care who it is. And if it is J.J. McCarthy, it is J.J. McCarthy. I might not be a fan of it, but once again, I will support the decision. Now, running back, this is early in the process. You know, before free agency, I was taking a guy like Buck Irving, Trey Benson, whatever. I don't think Washington is in a position to where, like, why would you use the draft capital to take a running back? So I see people doing mock drafts and still taking a, a running back in, like, the third, fourth, or fifth round. And in my opinion, why would you use draft capital when you have Brian Robinson, who's going to be, like, the physical guy, the runner, and then Austin Eckler, um, who's, like, that change of pace. And even though he's like, he doesn't have that track speed, he's more of, like, the elusive guy. Um, I'm really excited about Austin Eckler. You know, he scores a lot of touchdowns. Um he kind of talked about it, how just the offense didn't really fit, you know, him last year with the chargers. So he really wanted to come here and he said, Washington showed the most interest in him. And I could really see why I think he's going to be a great security blanket. Once again, kind of like Zach Ertz, you know, being that check down guy, but then also being a, a big play waiting to happen for your quarterback Tree he doesn't have to, you know, be the hero every single game. Um, but he can rely on a veteran like Austin Eckler, who's short, stocky, elusive, very physical, great contact balance, and he can make big plays happen. Then you put him together with Brian Robinson, just be Rob feasting, wearing down defenses with his physicality, but he also showed that he can make big plays in the receiving game last year. I'm excited. And I think Chris Rodriguez brings a little bit of juice. Maybe they sign a guy um, after the draft, like I said, undrafted guy, kind of like what the uh, Ravens did with Keith Mitchell, who I like Keith Mitchell a lot last year. Um, he's a great speed guy for them. So maybe we do get a speed guy, but I just there's no point in getting somebody in the in the draft. There's no reason to draft one. Get a guy like Rasheen Ali who's going to go undrafted or something like that. Um, a guy who can have that home run ability in case something happens to Austin Eckler or B-Rob. And you have that backup option, but then also you have a speed guy that can just break things open. So I don't see them using any kind of draft cap pool to run back position. There's no need to. Now this is where it gets really interesting is the defense. This is where there's a lot of question marks, a lot of what are they going to do? And obviously I'm going to start with the defensive line. Yeah, sign Dorrance Armstrong. Love that signing. Um, you have Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen coming back. I don't see any of them leaving. People talking about trading John Allen. No, there's no reason. Makes no sense. Then you have Clellan Farrell, who was added, and also Dante Fowler Jr. Then you've got Fedarian Mathis, who I hope can stay healthy this year. I would love to see what he can do in a full season. You have John Ridgway, who's been a huge um, pickup for us. And then KJ Henry, who had some good flashes last year. We also bring back F.A. Obada, and we still have Andre Jones from last year. Um, and then some more depth. But my thing is, when I, when I was talking about positions that Washington might be set at, it's the, it's the defensive line, and more specifically, the edge rushers. So obviously before free agency, we're like, all right, we're drafting Chop Robinson. We're drafting Darius Robinson. This is a really good pass rusher um, class in the draft. But it would not surprise me one bit if Washington rolls with this lineup into the season. You have Dorrance Armstrong starting. You have Clellan Farrell starting. Then you have Dante Fowler rotating in. You have KJ Henry rotating in. You have F.E. Obata rotating in. Andre Jones. I like Andre Jones a lot, too. I, I want to see more out of him. I'm just saying that's a lot of bodies. Maybe they draft a guy if someone crazy falls to them. But it would not surprise me if they decided to not go that route. It would not surprise me at all. So keep that in mind. Am I ruling it out? No. I think anything's possible. Like I said, if Chop Robinson is there at like 36 or 40 or something, or Darius Robinson or Adisa Isaac, someone of that caliber, there it's going to be tempting. It's going to be extremely tempting. Depends what what other moves they decide to make. But it would not surprise me at all if that's the D-line they're rolling with. And then you have linebacker. You have Jamin Davis. You have Bobby Wagner who's added, and then Frankie Lavu. I'm excited for both of those guys. A complete just revamp to the linebacker room, which we haven't had in a long time. And then you add a depth guy like Anthony Pippen, who's a really good special teams guy as well. The Lions did not want to lose him. They have Keandre Jones and then Brandon uh, Bouye uh, Randall um, behind him, just depth guys. And my stance on the linebacker room is that I think they add another 
fourth or fifth round guy, someone that, you know, can rotate in, someone that, you know, can play some special teams, but learn from Bobby Wagner. Um, we don't know what's going to happen with Jamin Davis. Like next season, obviously Frank LeVu is here for a while. So just a guy like a Cedric Gray um, in the fifth round would be perfect in my opinion. I, I would love that addition. Someone later on, I don't see them getting somebody in like the you know second, third round, anything like that. I just don't see it. Jeremiah Trotter, you got Barrett Carter next season. Next year's uh, linebacker draft is outstanding. Um, so I think they could add a late round guy, just some more depth. Um, and then, like I said, maybe like some special teams um, and just rotate it. So I don't think they go crazy in the linebacker room, but I love what they did so far uh, with free agency. And like I said, maybe they add a guy later on. Now, this is where it gets I'm, I, I scratch my head. I am clueless. So this is obviously just projections that uh, our lads, like I said, our, our lads.com is what I use for uh, depth charts. If you go to the Washington Commanders page, it's pretty blank. Um, even though it's an unofficial depth chart, it's pretty blank. <laughs> they are still working on it. They don't even know what's you know going to happen with the depth chart. So you have St. Juice le- listed, listed as the left corner. You have Derek Forrest as the strong safety Percy Butler as a free safety. Michael Davis as the right corner. Um, and Quan Martin as the nickelback. So, in my opinion, our lad says we hate Emmanuel Forbes Jr. Uh, in my opinion, I think he's, uh, he's obviously going to start you know, right corner. I think Michael Davis was a good signing as a veteran guy. Um, he can make some plays, but he's not a starting guy, in my opinion. Uh, and the same with James Pierre. Uh once again, that's a depth guy. All the guys that we signed, in my in my opinion, at corner, um, even Noah uh, Ignabogany, I just I, I don't see him as a starter. So I think Washington is still looking for that other side at left corner. Um, I just don't see them rolling with St. Juiced and Emmanuel Forbes as the two starting corners, and then you have Quan Mart as the nickelback. Um, I do like Kaya Blue, uh, Blue Kelly. I'm, once again, I'm not expecting a ton out of him like right away. I, I like his upside. I really liked him coming out of the draft. Um, but once again, maybe Quan Martin is that starting slot guy. Maybe Quan Martin's going to be the free safety because he had some flashes there as well. I think Quan Martin is like the the free safety version of Jeremy Chen. So Jeremy Chen, in my opinion, I think he should start at strong safety. Um, I think he's going to rotate in a couple different ways, but he does have number 11 kind of looks like a linebacker. The page has him listed as an outside linebacker. I don't know. You know, right now the league is a lot of, you know, four, like three safety sets, sometimes four, sometimes four corners. It's big. It's big nickel. It's big dime. A lot of extra DBs you usually have four linemen, two linebackers, and then the rest is corners and safeties. And you can interchange that however you want to, an extra safety or an extra corner, whatever. But it's a lot of just two linebacker sets. You're not going to see a lot of three linebacker sets. Sometimes you, you get a, like a little 5-2 where it's five on the line, two linebackers, and then you build out the secondary however you want. But in my opinion, I think Jeremy Chin could be one of those guys that's like that Swiss Army knife that you'll see him at strong safety. You'll see him in the box a little bit depending on what coverages they decide to do. In my opinion, I think Dan Quinn runs a lot of cover too, a lot of Tampa too. Um, so I could I could see some Jeremy Chen, whether it's like out there at strong safety or he's like in that box role. I could see that. But then in my opinion, Quan Martin's kind of like the opposite of him. It's where it's like I can see him starting at free safety, and I can also see him playing as that nickel back, um, that that slot corner that can keep up with these tight ends and some of these running backs and some of these slot receivers, whatever they have them doing. So I just, I, there's, there's still so much to figure out with this defense. But then another point I've been making with people is Dan Quinn and, and coach Witt, especially last year in Dallas, they were doing, they were getting a lot done with little to work with. And what I mean by that is, you know, tr- uh, Trayvon Diggs going down, obviously out for the season. That was big for them. But then having Dron Bland step up, break the record for pick sixes, and then you have uh, Stephon Gilmore who just – it seemed like he was done, and then he comes back you know, under Quinn and has a great 
season last year. Just stepped up big time for him. It's just the secondary in general. You know, he, he moved Marquise Bell, a safety to a linebacker, and he played really well in that position. You know, he just had to move some things around because of the situation, and he really made things work. So it would not surprise me if they take a corner in like the third. Y'all know I love Kim Hart. Uh, I love Kyrie Jackson. Um, I like Max Melton a lot. There's some of these like third round guys, maybe even fourth round guys. It would not surprise me at all if they get somebody in the third or fourth round to be a starting corner outside of Forbes. And this guy just hits the ground running because of how well Quinn and Witt can coach these guys up. I'm excited to see what they can do. I, am I slightly worried? Yeah, I would have loved to have a Jerry Sneed. I would have loved for the, the Greg Newsom trade. That I would love for those two things to have happened. But at the same time, Coach Quinn and Coach Witt make a lot happen with just a little bit of you know stuff to work with. So I'm not going to freak out yet. Yes, obviously the defense was atrocious last season. But I could see a situation where Forbes is starting outside. I think Forbes is going to be much better under the coaching staff we have here now. I mean, much better. Going from Ron Rivera and, and Del Rio to now having you know Coach Quinn and, and Coach Witt Jr., I love that for him. Like I'm, I am 100% pulling for Forbes. I'm expecting him to bounce back at a high rate this season. But then I think Jeremy Chin's going to start at strong safety. They can still get Justin Simmons for that free safety spot. He's still out there. Um, or they can get a guy like Cam Kinchins um, in like the second. Some have him projected third. So, I mean, it just really depends how they go on that route. Um, but I would love a guy like Cam Kinchins to play free safety with Jeremy Chin at strong safety. I, I that That, in my opinion, is my dream scenario. Those two at safety. Um, or a Tyler Newman or a Caleb Bullock. Um, there, there's a lot of safeties in this class I like, and you can get a really good one in the third round, maybe even fourth round. Um, Tyler Newman's going to go high, though. Um, probably second round. He's probably a first safety off the board. But nonetheless, I don't think anyone knows <laughs> what they're up to with the secondary. I, I just, I, I'm, I, What's that wind horse meme where he's like, something's going on in Utah. Something's going on in Washington secondary. And like I said, I am extremely confident in what I heard about the Greg Newsom news. Once again, maybe they were interested. Maybe they aren't anymore, whatever. Maybe the, the trade price was too high. I am extremely confident in what I heard with that. So I don't think they're done. I don't think they're, once again, I don't think they're okay just being like, okay, it's going to be St. Juiced and Forbes next year or St. Juiced and Michael Davis next year. That is not what's going to happen. Um, so maybe the, the Greg Newsom trade happens. I don't know, but I'm kind of just putting that on the back burner and moving on from that right now. Cause like I told y'all, it's really hard to get these things done in the NFL. It is extremely hard to get these trades done. Um, quarterback is a little bit easier to so Sam Howell trade. It was easy for us. Cause we had a lot of teams that really wanted him, and he goes to Seattle and they said it was extremely hard to get done. <laughs> so it just tells you it's not easy to make trades happen in the NFL. But I, I really think that they draft somebody in the third round because um, we got some extra picks now um, and take a Cam Hart or a Max Melton or a Kyrie Jackson, someone of that caliber. And like I said, I'm going to be doing position videos, breaking down. Like maybe they get one in the second. Who's there? Maybe they go in the third. Who do I like fit-wise? Break some things down. Probably going to do some individual videos as well. I got tapes for everybody. Um, but I don't think they're done with the corner room yet, obviously. They've got to add somebody, and I think if they could add somebody in the third, fourth round or whatever, and he would start, and he'd be good right away. I'm that confident in Quinn and Coach Witt. So what I'm going to be doing on these videos is talking about the next wide receiver weapon that we've got to add. Um, and like I said, I have a list of like four or five guys I really like um, in the second and third round. That could be really good wide receiver twos and maybe some wide receiver one upside. Um, if you follow me on X, you've already seen me talk about a couple of guys I like a lot. But then you're, I'm also going to talk about left tackles. I'm going to talk about the top 30 visits coming up. I'm going to talk about options trading up into the first round. But then also if we decide to stay at 36, who could possibly be there? Um, obviously right tackle as well. 
like I said, maybe they just move Cosby and Wiley around. Like I said, I personally would hate it. Um, but you only have so many picks in the draft, and you've got to hope that both love tackles right away could start and not suck. Um, I'm going to talk about a tight end because I think a tight end, too, is a big need. Um, no offense, John Bates, but I really want um, a tight end, too, that can come in here and contribute and learn on her Zach Ertz and get some production right away. Obviously, I'm going to do that quarterback video. That is the uh, that's the dynamite waiting to go off. The, the Drake May versus Jaden Daniels and maybe a cameo from JJ McCarthy. Who knows? Um, I might, I might talk about running back. I don't know. We'll see how much time we got. Um, like I said, I just don't see a reason for them to draft one. So maybe I'll talk about like some undrafted free agent, um, possibilities. And then, like I said, I'll, I'll talk about the, the defensive ends. I'm not gonna really talk about the interior D line. Um, cause I don't think John Allen and John Ping is traded, but maybe they're set at D line, but if not who I could see them going after, um, same with some middle round uh, linebackers. They're not going to take one in like the second or third, in my opinion. They have their stars here. They just need to build out this depth here and get some contributors and maybe some future guys um, as well. And then I'm going to talk about that secondary. I might have to break that video up because it's going to be long. Talking about corners, talking about safeties. Um, there's a lot of different things I'm going to talk about on that one. So can't wait, guys. Um, but I appreciate y'all tuning into the video. Like I said, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And um, the draft is close. Like I said, I'll be headed over to Detroit. Uh, I've got my credentials for the draft and everything. I will be there on site providing as much content as possible. But from now to then, it's time to buckle up and start talking NFL draft. So hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, and I'll see you all next time here on the JTFB channel. Peace.